Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is an episode about financial freedom and in particular about financial independence and the relationship between parents and children and financial independence. And I've been thinking about this because I've been reading a, a book uh, called The Millionaire Next Door by Thomas Stanley, which is a really interesting book. I highly recommend it. It's um, got a lot of research findings um, from interviews and surveys and statistical data about what the spending habits, consumption habits, and other um, sort of preferences and life choices are of people who have become millionaires within one generation um, in, in America. And it's got loads of really, really interesting findings, mostly revolving around how frugal um, people who become millionaires within one generation are and how little they spend on luxury or consumption items. Um, and there's, I mean, there's lots to talk about there. But one thing that really uh, struck me as interesting was the findings about the relationships between parents and children and financial independence. And in short, what, what Thomas Stanley um, found was that those adult children who receive more economic outpatient care from their parents, um, that's a term that he uses, basically those, those adult children who receive more cash from their parents in adulthood um, tend to achieve far less wealth and uh, development in their own personal wealth themselves. So he gives the example of how... This kind of financial dependence gives um, adult children a false sense of security. And he uses the example of, say, imagine that there's a, um, an adult who receives a cash gift of £5,000 um, per year or dollars or whatever you want to think of this in terms of. And he makes the point that if that was being generated um, in interest from your own uh, investments, then let's assume a 5% uh, rate of interest for the sake of argument, you would need to have a net worth of £100,000 to generate that um, each year. And so he gives the example that those adult children who are receiving £5,000 in cash are living sort of with the feeling as if they had £100,000 in the bank or in investments of some kind. And this got me to thinking about uh, the relationship between um, parents and children and the question of money. Because I know that for me, growing up, um, I was surrounded um, by people in my generation and uh, my parents' generation who kind of work from the assumption that there would be economic assistance from parents to adult children. And this shows up in a number of ways. Firstly, um, it shows up in university. Um, so the first thing that happens is that most people go to university and they spend at least three years getting subsidized uh, living from their parents. Um, their parents continue to pay for them in some way or another, or, or at least subsidize them. Even if they're taking on a lot of debts to do university, they're still being subsidized. And the other way that it shows up is a lot of people um, I know continued through their 20s to um, go back to living at home for long periods of time or to receive assistance in getting a mortgage and so forth. And that, you know, for example, that again um, would give you the impression that you had more in assets than you really do. And it's interesting because in the book, um, Thomas Stanley talks about uh, assistance in getting mortgages or setting up your first home. And he makes the point that often what happens is that parents will help their kids get set up in their first home, either by subsidizing their mortgage or um, buying it outright and renting it to them and so forth. And that often puts the um, young adult children uh, in a neighborhood. Um, with relatively high consumption 
because their parents want them to get set up in a nice neighborhood and so forth. And what that means is that these young adults, um, beginning of their careers, uh, not making much money, already are having to support a consumption lifestyle that's far above what they would really uh, be able to afford if they were economically self-sufficient. And it sort of hides the cost that they're, get, they're already taking on um, just in living in that neighborhood because then, you know, there are um, the surrounding services are more expensive and you have friends and neighbors and so forth. And people tend to then start living like the people around them in terms of consumption level. So what this book found is that those who reach economic self-sufficiency as quickly as possible in adulthood and don't receive subsidies from their parents are more likely to achieve real wealth later in their lifetime. And I think that is a, a really interesting um, finding because I think our culture um, does not promote economic self-sufficiency um, of adult kids. And I know, for example, for me, I know that I myself, um, when I thought that there was money in my family, um, that had an impact on what I thought about uh, I might need to do to be economically self-sufficient in the future. Now, it just so happens that the way that things worked out with my family, it became very, very clear to me um, fairly early in my 20s that there was no way that I would be able to depend on economic subsidy from my parents. And in fact, um, it looked to me like I was going to be subsidizing uh, my parents the, the other way. So in other words, I was going to be the one doing the sub subsidizing. And that had a huge impact on my thinking about what I was doing. Spending a lot of time really treading water financially, um, not accumulating debt, but certainly not accumulating um, wealth either. And I think if I had been more aware of these issues earlier, I think it would have helped me getting my entrepreneurial career off the ground uh, faster. So that's why I thought it'd be useful to do a podcast about this because it is an important question. And the other thing that comes out of the book, um, which is a, an interesting finding too, is that the more economically self-sufficient the kids are, the less uh, tension there is within the family relationships because Kids who are that adult children who are economically dependent on their parents have these internal family stresses and tensions about who's going to inherit what and who's getting more and who's getting less. And these whole sort of really toxic family dynamics can develop and can sustain through people's lives. And I think it seems to me that if you want to have a positive relationship with your parents and if you feel that that's possible, um, the economic dependency question is certainly one that I don't think uh, will help um, in, in going forward. And most importantly, the sooner you get to economic independence, the more opportunity there is for you to generate your own wealth. Now, I know um, friends and acquaintances who have very significant financial ties to their parents. For example, they are involved in working with their parents and they may um, be looking to take over a family business and often there are significant um, potential gains in terms of uh, inheritance down the line and stuff. And I think this can really influence decision making. And of course, sometimes there are, there's a lot of money potentially involved in these things. But the cost in terms of sort of preventing you from finding your own path and choosing your own direction and learning economic self-sufficiency without that safety net. Um, the cost in terms of the distraction to finding your own path that this creates waiting around for your parents to um, give you money, I think is a, is a big cost. And so in terms of finding freedom, which is what this podcast is all about, I would highly recommend looking very carefully at how much economic outpatient care you're receiving from your parents and having a think about what it would take 
to get to real financial independence as quickly as possible. Because that brings with it a, a focus and a directedness in, in terms of your own finances, which ultimately will, according to the statistics, put you in much, much better um, stead for uh, creating your own wealth. And uh, the reason for creating your own wealth is obviously to have the um, financial freedom that, uh, that can mean that can give you more freedom to do what you want with your life. Now, I also have uh, friends and I know, uh, I know acquaintances who have developed um, financial independence from their parents far more consciously than I did um, and also earlier in their adult life than I did. And I think that's something to be enormously proud of. Um, it's a very difficult decision to make, and there are definite sacrifices in the short term. But uh, at least the book that I'm reading, um, uh, the statistics in, in the book that I'm reading suggest that you've made a decision that is really going to help you in the long term in terms of your own financial development. And uh, that has been my experience too. In the long term, it is enormously beneficial um, to both your own relationships and to your own financial health. So I think it's uh, a decision, yeah, that you should be very proud of. So I hope that's helpful. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have any feedback about this podcast, uh, please do let me know. Thank you so much for listening.